There is no death. Energy transforms. Even science is beginning to say that. No medium can explain exactly what happens after death. Many of us have different stories to tell. But energy and science does not die. We transform, guys. So as the earth is splitting, and as you guys are going through your own journey, you will have to find a vibration or an energy that supports you. So that's what we're talking about, splitting. Those of us that are awakening and going to different dimensions will actually walk away from some of the news, some of the corruption, some of the things that have been holding this planet for many years. You can look at it as life lessons. You can look at it as the way it was. There's thousand and one things out there, and I can't possibly, nor my channel, explain them all in an hour video or a half hour video or even several days of a video. But 14 years ago, after I flew out of that tunnel of energy I was talking to, I was also in a meditation group and remember myself being took. And I was seeing at this time big coliseums with massive books. And I came back talking about, oh my gosh, what just happened? And the people in this group that were much more educated than I was, much more intelligent than I was, actually asked me where I went. And I thought, I have no idea. And I kept quiet because I didn't trust myself. I didn't believe in what I was seeing. What they were actually showing me, and many like me on this planet, because I am no one special. There's thousands of us that are starting to come across, and we all have a piece of this puzzle as we're putting it together. But what they were actually showing me were all these records that were beginning to crumble. All this kind of so-called man, whether you want to call it the ascetic records, or you want to call it DNA, cellular membrane, it was crumbling. And it started over 11 years ago. We're in the midst of this now, guys. So we are detoxing past emotions. We are no longer listening to our politics. We are no longer listening to all the family values. Some people are saying that we're becoming selfish for a bit. I know that's being pointed my way with, from my family and different people that know me because yes, I am being selfish. For the first time ever, I'm doing what's comfortable to me. I'm owning up to who I am. And the word selfish really isn't about being selfish at all. It's about taking responsibility. And is it easy to take responsibility and argue people's thought patterns when they've been crammed down our throats for years? No, it's not. Is it critical and mandatory today? Yes, it is. Because mankind as is at the brinks of so much, guys. This world's in a fragile place. How are you going to be changing things? People point to me all the time. Oh my God, how can you try to be positive when this, this, and this is going on? As a little girl and as a teenager and as a young adult, I focused on the misery of this world. I actually woke up grouchy. I was miserable. I was depressed. I would read climb, gores, crap, you name it. But a few years back, as we were coming out of these new vibrations, I was actually showing how powerful thought was because I was focusing on the wrong stuff. I was focusing on everything that was wrong with this planet instead of focusing on what's right. And when you're going back earlier to the scientific experiment, it's like a magnet. So if you're in a room and 60% of that room is grouchy and you walk in and 40% is happy, unless you're trained to go to the 40% guys, by science, you will go right into the negativity. You will become more grouchy. It can be proved by how many times you're in a traffic jam. Some person cuts us off for whatever reason. Many of us want to throw the finger, curse or yell, and they, we let them accept that day. So how you get away from this is as you're, somebody's cutting you off, you sit there and you say, okay, you might be having a bad day, and you look at the fact that you didn't have a car accident, you didn't have a car crash, and you slowly start to disconnect that way. Or if somebody's arguing with you, and it takes two to argue, what you learn to do then is walk away from that argument and let that energy calm down. One thing that I found, because we're going to be giving you tools on this for a little bit, one thing that I found is when you're arguing with somebody, and we're all conditioned to want our point of view across, you will actually stay arguing because you want to prove to yourself that A, you really care, B, that you're actually right, or C, that you're just such a nice person that you're going to let this person dump on you. One of the things to kind of retrain your brain is this, and this was actually given to me many years ago, is to stop the kind of energy going, is say, I value your opinion. Then you turn around and you say, perhaps one day you'll value somebody else's. 
and then you walk out of that room, you do something that's happy, or you put that person in a position where you did get along. The reason that I'm going to explain it is this. When I asked them why would I do that, they said, well, think about it. The energy is combining and mingling. You're trying to get your point across. You're, the other person's trying to get theirs. Obviously, you must value what they're saying. Otherwise, you would flip them the bird and get the hell out. Nobody's chaining you there. Nobody's keeping you there but your own mind, your own kind of sense of responsibility or value or whatever it is. So, obviously, to that energy field, you go, I value your opinion. That instantly quiets down their brain. They're thinking, oh my God, I've been heard. Oh my God, this is so great. With you, you're saying, okay, I satisfied that. The reason that they told me to say, perhaps one day you'll value somebody else's, you already know that somebody else is you. Are they ready to value your opinion right now, whether it be the politicians or your teacher or the, your lover, whoever it is? No, of course not, or they wouldn't be arguing with you. But if you kind of throw that someone else in, you can kind of train your own brain to sit there and say, wow, I'm walking away. I can't fight this argument anymore. I can't fight this direction anymore. And in your own mind, you're valuing yourself. The reason that I ask you to walk out of the room or they ask you to walk out of the room is this, it's changing the energy field. When you walk out of the room and you put that person in a place where you were happy, you can start to see their point of view. And that's what this is, change of dimensions is doing. It's making us all become more empathic and more sensitive to the other point of view. And I don't want to be painting doom and gloom all the time because yes, politically there is a mess, but realistically you start to look at it this way. There never has been a time on this planet when the masses are pulling together with religion. There still always are those people that won't tolerate. Of course, there's always the contradiction, but in all honesty, a biracial marriage is more acceptable now than they were in the 1800s or 1900s, yes. Are gays and lesbians more kind of accepted? Yes. Are more and more children coming in as aphrodites with both sexes? Yes. Because then those parents are starting to love them. Because it takes the masses, guys, to wake up. That's why the universe has been dumping so much crap. That's why, because if you're kind of going through something and you go back into... I'm going to say the early 60s or the early 80s when uh, we were having drug problems on earth or depression problems on earth. Unless it affected the average individual personally, not a lot of people care. So the universe dumps more. More people are having people that have uh, drug addicts that are affecting their family. It's no longer labeled to the stigma off oh, it's the way the kids were raised, or it's this, or it's that, or they don't come from a good family, or blah, 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 blah. Because there is no one way or the other, guys. It's about you guys unlocking yourself. And unfortunately, there's just as many drug addicts that come from fantastic families than there are drug addicts that come from so-called street people. And that's all the judgment that this universe is asking you guys to take away. You know, it's, it's true. We're so quick at pointing the finger at others and holding other people responsibility. And this universe is now making us do this, making us responsible for us. And that's why we talk about leaving the so-called reality tunnels of psychology, because people will argue the fact and say, well, it's really easy for you because you've had it this way. No, everybody's got a struggle. Everybody's got a choice. If you're a child, of course, if you're stuck in an abusive home, there's not an awful lot you can do about it. That is your reality. That is your conditioning. That is your training. But as that child gets older, do you have to live in that kind of memory or, or kind of reality of, oh my God, I can't do any better because I was an abused child or I came from an alcoholic or this happened to me or that happened to me. No, you do not. That is when you're actually locked into a vibrational energy field or a conditioning because every cell within our body holds our memory patterns. And that is also being detoxed from mankind right now. That explains to you guys why sometimes you can be in a good day and the next minute you're thinking, oh my God, I just want to kill somebody or why am I angry? It's because as you become multi-central human beings and as the universal energies and the spirits and all these people that are helping us with this ascension come across, if we actually judge that energy field, it throws us off balance. 
many people say to me, because I try to be as unjudgmental as possible, I still get caught up in human emotions. But I kid with those that I know well, that I don't stay on Earth's vibration very long. And it's because I try from a moment to moment not to get caught up on the energy field off it, not to get tied up in other people's emotions, other people's angers, other people's thought patterns. And is it difficult? Oh, it took me over 11 years of training myself and I still have moments as I'm detoxing where I change on a dime or I catch myself being miserable. But I've done this. I've learned to do this and take a step back and go, wow, am I really angry or am I angry at a circumstance? And most people walking this planet will say the same thing. We want peace. We want to have justice. We want to have everything else. And what my channel, and I don't want to call it my channel. The reason I'm calling it my channel is I don't know anybody else that's come forward to help me. So if there's anybody else out there that's listening to the Universal Channel of Inner Peace and Knowledge off the belt of Orion, please email me. I was given this title a couple of years back when I was doing a lecture on power of thought and everybody was saying, who are you listening to? And I thought, well, I better go back up and ask because I don't get caught up in whom I'm talking to or where my information is coming from or anything else. I just figure, okay, once I connect to the energy field, I trust this energy field. Changing my own thought patterns, guys, have changed my life. Am I a completely 100% happy human being? Of course not. I'm human. I still go through my struggles. It's just I know they're my struggles now or my hurdles to get past, not the universe's. And I'm not responsible for picking up anybody else's crap but my own. And it's so much easier to pick up other people's crap and to use those excuses. I had them a dime a dozen as it is to go through our own so-called shit. Um, we are... the. the Many different channels are coming in to help this ascension, guys. And I don't want to knock any of them, nor do I want to promote any of them. Because you have, as an individual, the right to listen to whomever. That is your right. That is your birthright. So if you want to tune in to the doom and gloom or tune in to all the negativity, you have every right to do so. And that's why I'm talking about your earth splitting. Because as we go through ascensions and as other people that you care and love about decide that they're going elsewhere or they're getting their energy field or they're getting their vibrational field, they will go searching to that energy field that's more compatible with them. That's the split. They always will be on this earth for the next several years, maybe the next hundred, because earth rings are very slow learning. We're very stubborn. We ask for fix. Universe cannot fix. There's no magical pill anywhere, guys. Even if you're doing healing, how it truly works is we give you the tools. And if your body believes in that, guess what? You will flourish. If not, you won't. And that's how it works. It's like a very scientific energy vibration equation. So um, as we're flipping through other things... Many of you will start to realize that as you're becoming more sensitive to the energy, you will be emotional. There's a big thing right now with the amount of anxieties and depression running this planet. And as we become more susceptible to vibration, we pick up on other people's energy fields. Even in the scientific realm and the spiritual realms, they've always said that the energy affects us. I've always been one of those that have been trained this way. We're spinning and vibrating in an energy. We have the right to expand it, the right to retract it. We can do that with practice. But that other energy field, unless we pick up on it, really can't bother us. People say, oh, yes, it can. I don't know how many times I've been asked to do home cleansings with possession. I'd be a multimillionaire right now if I would change some of my ethnics or the channel that I listen to that will not let me say that, that the spirit can come into you, whether it be... Um, you're possessed, whether your home is haunted for $500, I can clear your energy channel. I'm going to get a whole bunch of feedback for this one, but no disrespect. If you want to believe in it, go ahead. But I have no choice but to say to this, what if you choose to believe in this, that that energy is not harmful, but the thought pattern attached to it does bug you? Do you like child rapists? Hell no. I used to do tortures in my mind worse than Hitler themselves, and I will be honest with it because it was one of my pet peeves. I used to go banging down on drug houses trying to change them and change the universe until I realized I was focusing on the wrong stuff because all I got was more and more coming my way. Once I learned to disconnect from that and sit there and say, okay, it's still out there, but not in my world. 
And all you can control, guys, is yourself. And that's the key to getting this plan on a different dimension. Because if we're controlling ourselves and we're taking responsibility for ourselves and we're content with ourselves, do we really want to go out and cause all this damage and cause all this harm? Hell no. If I'm in a good mood, the last thing I want to do is hit a grumpy on the other side of the street. I would do everything possible to avoid that person. I will actually just smile at them, wish them well, and go and do something else. Because can I change that person or can I personally change that environment? No, I cannot. All I can do is change my own environment. And that's why this earth is stuck. Because we have good intentions. Did I have good intentions when I wanted to take out those drug dealers? Oh yeah, I thought I was doing society a big favor. I'm going to get those drugs out of my house. I'm going to get those drugs, you know, out of this. I'm going to go knocking over there and say, take it elsewhere. But as we're going through these different changes, where was my thought? Drugs. Where was my thought? Anger. What was I getting? Anger and drugs. That's how they trained me, guys. And I can only talk about that. Half of the struggle that I had coming into who I am is I'm not book smart. Every book that I went to read contradicted another book. No disrespect to the books. Every time I was asked to read something, the book would fall out of my hand, or I would do this, or I would do that. Have I met many fantastic mentors or people? Of course I have. I will not knock anybody on this planet anymore because everybody has something to show us. Do I choose to hang around drug addicts and force dr and go down now to politics and hold the signs up and sign petitions? No, because I know it's not the way to change it. I will focus now on positivity or peace. Mother Teresa said as she walked this earth, she will not go to one anti-war demonstration, but she will show up at every peace rally. And that's what it's going to take. Because if we're focusing like science... Even science would say we cannot focus on a problem, guys, and get a different solution. We have to focus on changing the solution. So when you're looking at that drug addict, you can sit there and you can say they're on their own journey. Walk away. Offer stuff if you can, guys. But really learn to walk away. And let that addict and let that drug addict or that depressed person give them tools but don't focus on their problems still. And that's why we're caught. It's really hard to sit there when people say, don't you care about this anymore? Of course I care about it, but I also know that if I focus too much on that, I'm keeping that accidentally alive. So I guess what the channel is going to be asking you guys to do is to sort of see where your thoughts are laid and then try to see if you can take something out of those thoughts and make it into something positive. And that's an individual struggle that each and every one of us will start to go through on our own. And we can do it as easy or as difficult as we choose to do it. Because everybody thinks that this energy is going to be saving us, that there's this almighty God that's going to be coming in by many different names, and a selective few will make it, and a selective few won't. But the truth is, we're coming into God energy, and we are part of God. So if you don't like the word God, use it universal energy, use it creating energy. And that's where this earth is laying at right now with all these struggles. So if you can kind of look at it, that life plays cruel jokes or God has a sense of humor. That helped me through this when I was going through my own awakening. And I still am awakening. I am nowhere near my entire journey. I have many things. But have I come leaps and bounds from the person that I was? I have. I've completely rebirthed who I was and I'm going into the toddler stage of growing now, for lack of a better word. But if we can kind of focus on all that stuff and all that positivity, guys, it will change. We all have to start somewhere. And as a world, we have got people that are now, uh, the election of Donald Trump for one, people were up in arms when that man got bought in. And I'm going to say, he was bought in. If you really are thinking that this world's run on justice since it's come into play, no, there's corruption in all politics. There's justice in all politics. There's good and bad everywhere in this world. But if you look at 90% of the world that was up in arms, even their own country was being torn apart because we were accustomed to just swallowing that leader. Earth has had many sheep and very few leaders. Now we're splitting the role where we're asking for no sheeps 
and all of you to become a leader. A true leader and a true teacher will make a better teacher and a better leader. It's called evolution. It's called growth. It's called walking past the next thing. And as you guys are learning about your thought patterns and learning to decide who you want to listen to, where you want to go, and what you want to believe, keep in mind, it is you that has control. People ask me all the time as a medium, can you prove 100% in death, life after death? Of course not. Can you do this? Can you do that? Of course not. I can't. And half the time, my guides will now step in to protect me and sometimes the spirits themselves and say, hey, you can't prove a damn thing. But can we give you enough evidence to make you curious on your own so that you start to search things out? Yes, we can. Same with healing. No disrespect to healers out there. People say, oh, you can heal me, you can heal me, you can do this. No, I can give you certain tools. Other people can also, but the true healing is up to you. Because you have the daily choice to decide where you want to go. And this will put people up in arms about, well, you know, um, a two-year-old, you know, doesn't choose cancer. It's horrible if anybody gets cancer, whether they're two years old, three years old, or 80 years old. But there's enough evidence now that unfortunately, guys, that that two-year-old, if you're kind of looking at the spiritual realms, is not just a two-year-old. That two-year-old is a soul, an energy being that's growing. And I don't want to confuse this, the spiritual realms with scientific realms, but this is what's happening on this planet and why this planet is going through as much as it is. Spiritualism was asked to be on trust and belief. And then, you know, the medical world came in because it couldn't be proved, they couldn't trust, they couldn't believe, they couldn't this. You know, many of us, myself included, we, you know, were diagnosed with this, this, or this, or was just depressed, blah, 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 blah. And I don't want to go too far into that. We'll discuss it on future channels or future episodes. But what happens then is that, no, can I prove anything? Of course not. I can't, you know, make you guys believe in something that you cannot see or trust or at least have an inkling to believe in. But then science is coming on board because science can no longer explain why is one and two depressed? Why are we getting more autism? Why are we getting more kind of weird diseases? Why are we unhappy? Why are more people saying, I'm seeing things, I'm hearing things, I'm experiencing things? And science goes looking. And yes, there is evidence that sometimes there is severe 